guys good morning so um i just want to briefly come on guys justin just had his breakfast not too long ago and he did all his work for the day um i just want to come on very quickly and just read john 10 to someone i wasn't going to come on today i was going to wait to come on um like tomorrow but i just wanted to read john 10 because um part of his homework um, from what he did with school well I do work with him and then you know the work that his teacher assigned but one of the, the videos that she had assigned for them to watch was like these um, you know like these little these messages for the kids and one of them was the one with the wolf but it was a different spin on it um, the wolf and something it wasn't like the, the traditional one with the um, it wasn't like the traditional one with the the wolf and the sheep it was like a spin on it that was more like modern and he watched it and it's like the lord like i told you guys he speaks a lot to me through stuff my son watched like through cartoons or videos and stuff like that and we had did our bible study he and i but we didn't talk about um the wolf this morning we talked about salvation and we talked about um yeah that's what we talked about today salvation and we talked about creation so that's what we were talking about today for like three minutes just you know so that that video that she had posted um a part of one of his assignments to do i was like wow and it was with the wolf and then the lord was showing me john 10. so today for our bible study slash parables well it's not parables but it's our a part of our parable series and Bible study, what we're going to talk about today is the shepherd and his flock, the unbelief of the Jews. And that's it. We're going to read all of John 10, which is 42 verses. And, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much going to be it. And then I'm going to get me some breakfast. So let's start with the shepherd and his flock. And we did do, um, a John series. We did a John series. Um, so if you missed those, you can check them out. So listen, so, oh, let me turn so sorry guys it just looks so dark to me it's the lighting y'all know the lighting in this room but i'm sorry okay so um let's start with the shepherd and his flock so i tell you the truth the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber the man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep the watchman opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved or kept safe. He will come in and go out and find pasture. Verse 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So, okay, so with this one, guys, um, before I keep on reading, with this one, um, the wolf, the, the mom had told, I believe it was sheep or something. It was like a modern day spin on it. But anyway, the mom had told the kids, they wasn't kids, they was animals, but they was animal kids. The mom had told the animal kids, um, like they was with her. It's like 42 minutes worth of things. Um, and it has different like parable stuff and that stuff. Like I'd be letting the kids watch, like when I tutor them too, sometimes. So I was really glad that his teacher had posted this particular one because he's been subscribed to this this channel for a couple of years but we never seen this one so the mom animal um because i was marking off his other stuff that he had to trace and stuff for the day so while he was working on that i was sitting by him but i was working on other stuff that he was going to move on to the next activity so the mom animal i forgot i don't know if they were sheep or what they were some type of animal it's not come you know even though i just watched it with him a little while ago but i'm just saying the, the animals I was more listening to it than watching. I believe they were sheep. And um, the mom animal was with them. She had to go to the market or go somewhere. And she told them to stay in the house or somewhere like 
or she went outside so i think she had to go to the market wherever it is she told them do not open basically do not open this door for nobody and if you grew up like i did you know they told you don't open the door for nobody don't even open the door for me if i say open the door don't open the door and then they get to a place where let's say they get locked up and they tell you this your mama open the door you look at them through the window and say you my mama, but you told me not to open the door for you. <laughs> and then they have to say, if you don't open this door, blankety blank blank. But then you it's so embedded in you that you're like, uh-uh. You my mama and I ain't open the door because you told me not to even open the door for you. So, you know, I don't know if you grew up like me with that, but yeah, but you take it so serious. You don't just go open and unlock the door for anybody. You don't just go open and unlock the door for anything. You know. When my dad was out, like before he got locked up and did all them years in prison, when he was out, he he did take care of us financially. He did buy us things. You know, when he was here, he was here with us. And when he was gone in other places, he was gone. But when he was here, he was here. And there were times when police is coming, knock on the door. Are people looking for my dad coming, knock on the door? You know, and you can't go open up that door for nobody. You know, and my mom would teach us that even after my dad got locked up and stuff, even my grandma, you know, because most of that's who we were with. They would teach us. You don't just go open that door for nobody. Even if you know them, you don't open the door. You come get your parent. So Holy Spirit is even speaking through that. You don't just go open up the door of your heart or your life or your legs or your relationship or your bed or your trust for anybody. This could be relationships. This could be friendships. This could be business. This could be ministry. This could be um, intimate. It could be a job. It could be a connection, whatever. You don't go open up that door just to open it up. You need to ask the Lord. This John 10 needs to be ringing because the thief is coming to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So getting back to the story about that, I believe those was those little sheep or whatever animals they was. I'm going to get off of here really soon. Um, I think a couple of the kids listened, but the youngest one, the most gullible one, the baby, even Holy Spirit was speaking through that because what the word talking about, um, they're not on solid, solid food. They're on, still on milk. They're infants. And if you're an infant and you really don't know the word, you could be tossed to and fro. The enemy, he has a better chance with you because you're not so mature in the word and in the Lord. So the baby was like, they kept saying, oh, that sounds like mommy, mommy's back. But the bigger kids was like, if mommy's back, why is mommy knocking on the door telling us to open the door? She have a key to get in the house. This is her house. And she told them before she went out, she said, do not open this door for nobody. She said, she ain't said nobody. My mom would have said, she was like, don't open the door. She told them like in a nice, sweet mama voice, you know, don't open the door. Don't do not unlock this door. Don't go out the door and don't open the door. Wait till I come back. The little baby was like, um, oh, that's mom. You know, let's open the door for mom. You know, and that wolf was, was playing on, he was trying to see who was the weakest. And he was playing and prying on that. You know, and that baby is innocent. They don't know no better. They want to look out for their mom. Like, your mama, I saw you. Like, okay, I know you're my mama, you know. But the bigger ones was like, well, the one of the bigger ones was like, well, you shouldn't open the door because the baby was straight. They was like, you shouldn't open the door because mom told us not to open the door. And then the other one was like, I don't think that's mom. They was like, because mom's voice doesn't sound like that. So thank you, Holy Spirit, because it shows the level of discernment. So one of them said, so the other one was, the other one said, no, you should open the door. The baby was like, you should open the door. Then the, the middle one was like, the middle one was kind of like in the middle. Like he could go anyway. I'm just showing, seeing this spirit sharing this with you guys. The middle one was in the middle. Like, okay, mom did say don't open the door. And that don't sound like mom voice, but they right in the middle. So it's like, you have to see where you are. So then the wolf came back. He did something, some type of trick with his voice. And he came back and he tried to make the voice sound like it was the mama. So now the middle one is like, Oh, we should open the door because that don't sound like mom voice, but this time her voice sounds softer. So if the enemy can try to get you that time, he's going to try to come back around another time and use another technique, but you still don't open that door. 
So I kind of stopped listening um, after a while because I had started doing his other activities and that one was winding down and I was like preparing his lunch and other stuff. But just the concept of listening to that. So then I stopped listening to see like what would happen. But anyway, when I came back in and I was listening because Jesse was telling me it's getting ready to go off. But basically what had happened was the wolf ended up eating them. The mom ended up coming and I don't know how she got him out her stomach. But she got him out. And then, like, I think on the third try, the wolf was like, um, what he said about them, I can't really word it how he said it. But basically, he was like, y'all are so warm and y'all going to be warm in my tummy and all this stuff. He plotting and planning and scheming. And another one that I'm going to read after um, John 10 is Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. But I just hope that that word bless somebody because the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy and i don't care how handsome a thief look i don't care how beautiful a thief look a thief is a thief a robber is a robber a murder is a murderer you know my grandma them taught me when i was little don't lie because if a person will lie to you a person will steal from you if a person will steal from you a person will kill you it goes to different levels and degrees and it starts off with a little small seed that's how sin is that's how evil is, and and it'll it'll go up. And no one take this out of context. But how many times have we watched on um the news and and, and heard about stories where these people they be like sociopaths and they be psychotic and they be demonic and they start off with burning um they start off with burning and harming animals. I'm not condoning this. I'm just being very honest why we're doing this Bible study because this is very real and somebody need to grab hold of this. Um, they start off with burning animals or harming little small animals. They'll start with something small. Then when they master that and they get used to that and the enemy can control them with that, they'll move on to human beings. They'll move on to, um, they may beat up on people, but they won't kill them yet. Then they're going to move on to kidnappings. Then they're going to move on to murder. That thing starts small and it grows if you don't catch a hold on it. So that person that'll start off lying to you, They'll start off scamming and being a con artist and lying to you. Uh, there's a few examples I can use. of. of um, I'm not going to call them famous people, but they famous cases all over the world. That if I say their name, y'all will know about these people. They'll start off like a con artist, scam artist, smiling in your face. But in their heart, their heart is there to come steal and kill and destroy you. That is their objective. That is their motive. Okay, so they're going to start with that smile, gain your trust, you put your guard down. They're trying to see if you like that little pig, the baby that really is not up on game. And it's going to start with that. Then they're going to begin stealing from you. And then eventually, to keep you quiet or if you don't comply, they're going to kill you. And we see that so much naturally. And I'm not speaking that over us because we claim life. But we have to be aware of these things. Like I said, we've done some teachings on life and death. And we did a whole John series and other videos like this. But I just felt to release this video today instead of tomorrow or Sunday. You know. So the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I don't care how he dress it up. I don't care how she dress it up. I don't care how the package is. You could wrap garbage you could put some garbage in a beautiful wrapping paper and package. If you don't open that package, you're not going to know what's inside that, that thing. And y'all know I be watching my detective shows and stuff. You know, I like Chicago PD and NCIS and Blue Bloods and stuff like that. And, you know, there was one time I was watching the, um, the person had mailed, he was mailing bombs. In packages, they're just like everyday regular packages. He was mailing bombs to these people's houses. He mailed one to the news, the news station. Trudy was going on on the interview, and all the whole team was looking at it. And the bomb, the bomb blew up. It killed the lady. It was another man was going to his mailbox. The bomb blew up. One with the car, and it, it just. And then one of them, he was sending these weird things in these packages. So it don't matter about how it look. It don't matter about how they try to deceive and, and do the package. By their fruit, you will know them. By their fruit, you will know them. God don't say by their clothes, you will know them. By how smooth they talk. By how they try to finesse you. Say by their fruit, you will know them. By their fruit. Your spirit will recognize their spirit. But if you have a blind and you deceive and you got 
scales on your eyes, how you going to see? This Bible says that the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full or have life and life more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The higher hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a higher hand and cares nothing for the sheep. That's why they run away because they don't care. They're in it to get what they want. But see, God is not like that. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And how do you get to know someone? Through intimacy, through relationship, through spending time with them, through learning what they like and don't like. And through them learning what you like and don't like. Through time. I have other sheep that are not of the sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Excuse me. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. At these words, the Jews were again divided. Many of them said, he is demon possessed and raving mad. That's what the enemy is going to say because you're speaking the truth. And they don't want that truth to be, they don't want people to be enlightened by the real truth of God's word. But they said, why listen to him? The other says, these are not the sins of a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? So let's close with um, the unbelief of the Jews and I'm going to read Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And you guys may get this video later on in the day. It takes a while, some time to process and upload, but it's early in the morning of me recording this. So then came the Feast of Dedication, that is Hanukkah, at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was in the temple area walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews gathered around him saying, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ or the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The miracles I do in my father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. The sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. I and the father are one. Again, the Jews picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many great miracles from the father. For which of these do you stone me? We are not stoning you for any of these, replied the Jews, but for blasphemy. Because you, a mere man, claim to be God. That's how that devil and, and the people that he operate through. They want to try to silence you. They want to try to kill off your vision. They want to try to kill off your dream. They want to try to stop you from speaking. They want to try to stop you from seeing and hearing. They want to try to stop you from doing anything that's going to connect you closer with God. They want to try to cut it off because you're not in the compliance with them. And you don't need to be in compliance with them because you are God's child. You're God's son. You're God's daughter. So that means you have to do things God's way. That doesn't say that. I'm just saying. Look, Jesus answered them. Is it not written in your law? I have said you are God's. That's Psalms 82, 6. If he called them God's to whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken. What about the ones whom the father set apart as his very own and sent into the world? Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy? Because I said, I am God's son. Do not believe me unless I do what my father does. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Did you hear what the word said? John 10, 37. Do not believe me unless I do what my father does. See, Jesus said, I don't do anything except the father tell me to do it or, or unless he tells me to do it. See, 
people, some people are doing what their father does because their father is God and they in Christ for real. And some people is doing what their father, the devil does. By their spirit, you will know them. By their fruit, you will know them. They only doing what their father tell them to do. They only doing what their father does. Whether that's for righteousness or evil, whether that's for good or light, whether that's for positive or negative. Stop ignoring the signs. If, if you keep seeing and you drive and you keep seeing ditch, dead end ahead, slow down, caution, construction is ahead, detours up ahead, and you keep ignoring all these signs, you can't put that on the road, you can't put that on the car, you can't put that on other drivers if you end up in a bad predicament. That's on you because you the one didn't pay attention to the signs. And you can feel in your spirit. Them signs is just confirmation that you need to turn and you're going the wrong way. Who who willingly want to drive into a ditch? Who willingly want to speed off the road? Who willingly want to go into their demise willingly? That's why the enemy try to play and use these techniques and play on you. He watch you. He study you. Be woke. People be like, oh, I'm woke. No, wake up for real. This is serious, guys. That Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 is not a joke. God, keep having me say that for you guys. I'm going to read that again this morning too, and I need to get off of here. Listen, do not believe me unless I do what my father does. So if it's contrary to the spirit of God, the Bible's talking about in Romans how if you are a spirit, of, if you are the son of God, you're led by the spirit of God. So, and also there's another scripture talking about, so if we, like, if you in God, let, so if you have the spirit, you got to keep in step with the spirit. Look, do not believe me unless I do what my father does. But if I do it, even though you do not believe me, believe the miracles that you may know and understand that the father is in me and I in the father. Again, they tried to seize him, but he escaped their grasp. And that's what God want many of you to do. Whoever this word is for on this level, you need to escape that trap, that temptation, that grasp. Because they're telling you they want to kill him. They don't want to keep you because they love you and grasp you because they care about you. They're coming in for the kill. Just like when the sharks smell blood and they move in, that's how them devils be. You may not see that that shark is coming, but the Lord is telling you that that shark is on the way. So you need to get out that water and get out of that vicinity with, with them. You want to keep your life or you want to lose it. This could be physical life or spiritual life. We have choices and we have free will. God don't force his hand upon no man. Look, but he escaped their grasp. Then Jesus went back across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing in the early days. Here he stayed and many people came to him. They said, though John never performed a miraculous sign, all that John said about this man was true. And in that place, many believed in Jesus. Let's close with these next few scriptures real quick. And another thing, just really quick, when people are, um, you know, living, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get deep into this. Let me just keep it PG. When people are living the wrong type of lifestyle and doing illegal activities and different things, okay? And they feel like they're going to live that life forever and not suffer consequences, especially if they in it doing some really terrible things to people and you know, a lot of things is going on. People are watching them. Governments are watching them. Now, sometimes, you know, certain governments can be shady and, you know, they'll pay them off or something. But if somebody seriously watching them, watching them, a lot of times they're going to let certain things add up. So when they get them, they got them on evidence. They got them on the truth. That's how the enemy is. He's going to try to let things add up on you if you don't turn back, if you don't do the right thing, if you don't take heed to God's confirmations and words. He's going to let the case build up on you, and then he's going to drop you, and he's going to come in for the kill for you. And no amount of money, no amount of clout, 
No amount of prestige, no amount of what you used to have or used to do can save you from certain sentences and punishments because that's the consequence that comes with that when you do not obey. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And it's not saying that they can't escape that and deliver it and be delivered from that, but they can only run from that for so long. We reap what we sow. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. He will direct your path. That's Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. I'm going to close with Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Talking about the full armor of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, sorry guys, put on the full armor of God so that when a day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, don't worry, I'm going to get sanitizer when I go in there, but I'm trying to get this word out. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests with this in mind be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints